I've had my geothermal heat pump for the past two years now. So far, it's been helping me to reach my net zero energy goals in my new house, or maybe I should say my not so new house now. But getting it installed meant drilling a 400 foot well in my backyard, running a cooling loop into the house to the foundation and getting everything hooked up inside the house. It's a little more complicated than your standard air source heat pump setup and a lot more expensive too. But was it worth it? I've learned a lot over the past two years and I've collected a bunch of data too. So what can you take away from my experience? And is there anything I'd change if I could do it all over again? Let's dig into it. I'm Matt Farrell. Welcome to Undecided. This video is brought to you by Surfshark. Now, before I dive into my personal thoughts and whip out my collection of charts, because I got a lot of charts, let's do a super fast recap of what a geothermal heat pump even is. In the world of physics, the conservation of energy is law. In a nutshell, the energy within a closed system must remain constant. You can't create or destroy energy. You can only move it. At a surface level, heat pumps seem to defy this rule because you can get three to five times more heat energy out of a heat pump for every single kilowatt of electricity that you put into it. But it's not creating heat energy. It's only moving it around. You're essentially using one watt of electricity to move three to five watts of heat. Heat pumps do this by using a fluid called a refrigerant that absorbs heat from the outside air. The refrigerant gets compressed, which raises its temperature even higher. Then it releases that heat into your home through a heat exchanger. And heat pumps can also operate in reverse to chill your house, just like an air conditioner. They move the heat from inside your home back to the outside air. In essence, a heat pump is simply a series of heat exchangers moving heat out of the house during the cooling cycles and heat into the house during warming cycles. A geothermal heat pump is doing the same exact thing except it's moving the heat from deep in the earth through a liquid inside of a loop into the house. And just like any other type of heat pump, it can also do the reverse and move the heat from the house deep into the earth. The big benefit of geothermal loops over air source heat pumps is the efficiency at much colder operating temperatures. It doesn't matter if the air temperature outside is 20 below, because when you go deep into the earth, the temperature stays pretty constant. In my area, once you go down to about six to 10 feet below the surface, the earth becomes a consistent 50 degrees Fahrenheit or about 10 degrees Celsius. But an air source heat pump at those same frigid 20 below temperatures would lose most of its efficiency and may struggle to keep your home warm. There's a nuance to that though, which I'll get into later. Now, one bonus feature of many geothermal systems is a desuperheater. Now this captures waste heat from the system and uses it to preheat water in a holding tank. That preheated water then feeds into your hot water heater, which has to work less hard to reach the final temperature. It's essentially free hot water from heat that would otherwise be wasted. And with all that in mind, I think that heat pumps are one of the best and coolest climate control technologies that you can get for your home today. And nothing beats geothermal's groundbreaking efficiency for heating and cooling your home. It's that exact reasoning that drove me towards wanting to get a geothermal HVAC system for myself. I live in Massachusetts, which can get pretty hot and humid in the summer and pretty cold in the winter. And no, it's not as hot as Florida or as cold as Minnesota, but it's got some wild seasonal swings that mean you want or sometimes need good air conditioning and heating. And because my wife and I were building our dream home, we were planning for the long term, like 20 to 30 years. So geothermal made sense to us. Now, I've said this about my experiences with solar panels too. If you wanna figure out if something is worth it, you have to clearly lay out your goals. These are of course personal decisions, so my goals may not align with yours. But in my case, my wife and I set out to create our energy efficient forever home. And the upfront costs were significant. There's absolutely no sugarcoating that. But the projected yearly operating costs were less than half what a comparable air source system would run in my area. And when you're talking about a 20 to 30 year timeline, that adds up fast. I'll get to the actual numbers and how they've held up in a bit, but that leads to the whole point of this video what's it actually been like living with it for two years. And speaking of long-term value, another investment that I've been relying on for years that's helping to defend my online privacy is today's sponsor, Surfshark VPN. Not too long ago, I was recently attending a geothermal conference and between hotel and conference Wi-Fi, I leaned heavily on Surfshark VPN to keep my browsing secure and private. I've been using Surfshark for what feels like forever and get so much use out of it. Surfshark is a fast, easy to use VPN full of incredible features that you can install on an unlimited number of devices with one account. But that's not all. Even shopping services will sometimes gate prices based on your location, so you can change your location to make sure you're getting the best deal. They also have add-ons to their VPN service to unlock things like Surfshark Alert, which will let you know if your email or personal details like passwords have been leaked in online data breaches. 
Right now, they're running a special deal. Go to surfshark.com slash undecided or use code undecided at checkout to get four extra months of Surfshark VPN. Surfshark offers a 30-day money-back guarantee, so there's no risk to try it out for yourself. I've been using Surfshark for years, and I love it. Don't miss out on this great deal. The link's in the description below, and thanks to Surfshark and to all of you for supporting the channel. So what has it actually been like living with geothermal for two years? Since this is my first time living with a geothermal heat pump, there were a few things that caught me by surprise. I never have to lose my cool about thermostat settings anymore. I like never touch it, ever. In every house I've lived in up until now, I've had thermostats that worked on timers or where smart thermostats adjust things on the fly. For instance, in the winter, you might wanna keep the temperature around 72 degrees Fahrenheit when you're home, but drop it to 65 degrees Fahrenheit when you're away at work. Sometimes it's worth to do the same thing overnight while you sleep. And when it comes to most smart thermostats, they have a feature called adaptive recovery or smart recovery. This is where the thermostat learns how fast your HVAC can respond to temperature changes and will start to heat or cool early enough to reach the desired set point at the exact scheduled time that you want. Now, if you want your home to be at 72 degrees Fahrenheit at 7 a.m., the thermostat may kick on your system at 6.40 a.m. because it takes about 20 minutes to hit that desired temperature. Well, for geothermal systems, you actually don't want to do that. Geothermal HVAC systems are best run with little to no temperature setback because the ground loop provides a powerful buffer. Its high thermal inertia means it absorbs and releases heat gradually thanks to the Earth's stable underground temperatures. This makes the system slower to ramp up or down in response to big temperature changes. And that may sound like a downside, but it's actually a huge benefit. The result is a highly efficient and comfortable constant temperature that also reduces wear on the equipment. That's because the system isn't cycling on and off and trying to play catch up like conventional air source systems. Now, I was originally disappointed that a smart thermostat like Ecobee wasn't recommended for my water furnace system, but it turned out I didn't need one. The built-in app handles everything and because I'm not adjusting temperatures anyway, a third-party thermostat wouldn't add any value. This is the most comfortable house that I have ever lived in when it comes to temperature. A big reason for this is the incredible insulation and air tightness, but the geothermal system plays a huge role too. I keep it set between 72 and 75 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about 22 to 24 degrees Celsius, all year round. We only drop it when we're on vacation for extended periods. And even with the system running at a constant temperature, it uses dramatically less than an air source heat pump would. But now for some actual numbers. Here's the deep dive on costs, but <laughs> let me preface the, all the figures that I'm about to tell you for geothermal systems because they can give you a little bit of sticker shock when you price them out. The actual costs will vary wildly based on where you live. Now, I know the cost of getting a system installed in the US Midwest could be as little as a third of what I paid here in Massachusetts. So do not take what I paid as a surefire indicator of what it would cost you. Also, I've mentioned this in previous videos, but for full disclosure, Water Furnace did supply some of the system for me, but this is not a sponsored video for them at all. Now, before any kind of incentives or rebates, the total cost of the system was $78,000. Some of that cost was because this is a brand new home install with all new ductwork. $18,000 of that cost was just drilling the 400 foot well in my backyard. Again, there are other ways that you can install a ground loop for geothermal that can greatly reduce that cost. But for my setup, this is what it was. After the federal rebates, the system came out to about $54,000. Now, if this had been a retrofit instead of a brand new house install, state rebates would have brought that down to about $39,000, which would have been the cost of a comparable air source heat pump in my area that I priced out. Now, here's where the benefit of geothermal kicks in, the yearly operating costs. The theory going into getting this geothermal system was that it would cost around $950 a year to run, which included hot water production through that desuperheater that I mentioned earlier. Air source would cost around $2,100 a year to run. And you're talking tens of thousands of dollars in savings over 10 to 20 years, if not longer. And without factoring in hot water, my HVAC system cost about $697 to run for its first full year. Year two cost about $702. That's an average of about $60.20 per month. Now putting hot water production back into the mix, it would have cost $949 in year one and $954 in year two. That's an average of $90.06 per month. The prices I'm quoting here are based on the average electricity price in my area starting two years ago, which is about 31 cents per kilowatt hour. 
Now, if your electricity prices are different from that, it should be easy to recalculate to see what it might have been for your area. My system performed on solid ground, hitting those projections almost dead on. It's incredibly validating. But here's the part that really puts it in perspective for me. My server rack is really heating up my energy bill. I run a business out of my house and have a substantial home lab and network rack set up in my hallway closet. That thing consumes 17.8% of my total energy use. My HVAC system, just 14.8%. My home office tech setup uses more power than heating and cooling my entire house. That's more than my EV charging too at 11%. But that's pretty low though, because I mainly charge my EV off of excess solar production. For comparison, heating and cooling typically accounts for about 52% of a home's yearly energy use in the US. Even if you remove my computer setup and EV charging from the mix, my HVAC is still only about 20.8% of total energy use. Maintenance has been pretty down to earth, even if the initial investment might seem sky high. It turns out that the cost of maintaining my geothermal system is basically the same as the natural gas HVAC system that I had at my previous house. I have my installer come out at least once a year to check on the system, change out the air filter, and maybe top up the loop fluid. It's super easy. But the cherry on top for me is that I have solar and home batteries installed, which generates more electricity than I use over the course of a full year. So at the end of a year, the actual operating cost of my HVAC and hot water setup is, <laughs> it's basically zero. I can't say it's actually zero because I do still have an electric bill of about $150 to $200 a year because I'm grid tied and still have service fees. So if you wanna get pedantic, you could calculate the actual rough cost. My Geo's 14.8% energy use of $200 per year is about $29.60 or $2.47 per month to run. So was geothermal worth it? Well, it certainly was intertwined with what I wanted, but as a general recommendation for any of you out there, it's complicated. Shouldn't be a surprise, but based on my long-term goals with my whole house, yes, it was worth it. And one of my biggest goals was to be as energy independent as I could get, which meant zeroing in on net zero. A big way of achieving that is not just tossing more and more solar panels onto your home, but aiming to be as energy efficient as you can be with the appliances and devices that you put into the home. It's kind of meeting in the middle. The geothermal setup was a key way of keeping my energy use as low as possible. But this is not without its drawbacks. Is there anything I would have done differently? Yes, a couple things. Our system is actually oversized for our house. The water furnace unit is variable speed, so it didn't matter too much, but we might have squeezed out a little more value with something a little smaller. The bigger issue is that my home office and studio are built off the back of the garage, so they aren't technically part of the factory-built main home thermal envelope. The walls were constructed and insulated on site instead of at the factory. Now, while these rooms are heated and cooled by the same system, the rooms themselves don't maintain as consistent of a temperature as the rest of the house. In the summer, it's a couple degrees hotter than the rest of the house, and in the winter, it's a couple degrees colder. It's not bad at all, but it's noticeable. Now, if I could go back and do it all over again, I might have put a mini split installed just for these two rooms and kept it separate from the rest of the house. That would have allowed me to dial things in and only run the extra system when it's necessary back here. Now, where I live in Massachusetts, plus the fact that I was building a brand new house, this process was extremely expensive up front. However, federal, state, and utility rebates can dramatically reduce these costs and get things much closer to a comparable air source setup cost. Plus, you have options. Companies like Dandelion Energy that install geothermal systems in the northeast of the US have very small, nimble drilling rigs that can fit into tighter areas for drilling. This not only helps to install these systems in more locations, but it can sometimes help reduce the overall installation cost. If you have the room, going for a horizontal ground loop can be much, much cheaper than drilling. So would I recommend geothermal? Yes, with caveats. It depends on whether you're ready to stay grounded for the long term. But what do you think? Do you want geothermal for your home? Jump in the comments and let me know. You can also check out the extended cut of the video over on Patreon, where I go down a rabbit hole of my obsession with home assistant and tracking energy use. If you'd like to join, the link's in the description. Be sure to listen to my follow-up podcast, Still To Be Determined, we'll keep this conversation going. Keep your mind open, stay curious, and I'll see you in the next one.